Back on the discussion on uh, challenges in marriage and marital challenges, obviously, and physical challenges, and we've been discussing in detail the issues within the home, you know, uh, with marriage and after marriage and during marriage, especially with in-laws, which is a major, major issue. Now, I don't profess to have all the solutions to the problem, but these are some of the issues that we need to deal with. One is that women have to come to realize that it is fundamentally a, an issue between women. And as a community, women need to take responsibility in terms of coming to terms with these issues and discussing these issues in their own circles and coming to some sort of resolution as to how it will be dealt with by the women in the community. You don't need men. Women are talking about empowerment. You don't need men to give you a solution to your problems. You understand, number one. Number two, some of the other solutions that I'm just going to give you is that, as I said, they need to have these types of seminars. And it, hasn't, it cannot be one way you're having a one-on-one -on -one with the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. Why? Women are too clever. They'll be able to cook the entire interview, right? To manipulate it in such a way that the, 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 the poor interviewer will think that, you know what, this woman is the greatest thing since sliced bread. No, 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 really. I've been through the situations. The mother-in-law will come and talk to me and, you know, like, hey, I think, you know what, I mean, she just fell from Janina down, you know, right? And two days later, right, when you're interviewing the daughter-in-law, you just come to hear, no, 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 no. She came from Janina, but she went to hell first and then she came down, you understand? You didn't tell you about that part. No, no, really, really, right, one. Two, is that in terms of these situations here, you have to create a relationship, a friendship. I always tell girls that make your mother-in-law your best friend. Before you get married, make her your best friend. And the whole idea is, you know, you learn from the Godfather. Keep your friends close and your enemies. <laughs> no, 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 really, really. You, you got to have her on your side, right? And moreover, she knows full well what you're trying to do, right? She knows full well what you're trying to do, she knows that. But it also gives you an opportunity to get to know her. And you're going to have to realize that both of you have strengths and both of you have weaknesses. And let me tell you, women will know how to manipulate each other's strengths and manipulate each other's weaknesses. Trust me, this is not being in any way uh, you know, chauvinistic, but these are facts of life. And you know politics between women there. I mean, if all women were politicians there, you think Zuma is bad. Oh, you're in big trouble. Right? But that's besides the point. So you have to make her your friend. Thirdly, there comes a point, either easily or quicker in the relationship, or there comes a time very diff after a difficult process and after a period of time in the relationship where people come to realize their own specific uh, positions in the, in the home and in the relationship. So you'll come to realize, you know what, these are certain things I'm not going to change with my mother-in-law. Now, what do I do? You can do one of two things. And this is what where women fail all the time. You'll see your mother-in-law doing something and you know that she's set in her ways and you're not going to change. You can either accept it, not because it's right, but accept it from the point of view, it's not going to bother me, I'm not going to break my head over it. 99% of women allow it to work them up every single time. And it just adds to your stress and your frustration. As opposed to you knowing it's wrong, knowing that, but you know what, not going to change, ignore it, find another way to work around it, and go for it. As far as the mother in law be concerned, she got her way. As far as the daughter in law is concerned, she got her way, and both of them are happy. And there's less, no, no, really, there's less cut part. Because otherwise, it's like a perpetual. You try this side, I try this side. And you repeat the same thing over and over and over again. We had the same problem two days ago, we had the same problem today. Right? Example I'll give you. Uh, the mother-in-law will say, no, 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 no. Uh, I like Coca-Cola. Right? Mother-in-law is diabetic. Daughter-in-law will say, Coca-Cola is not good for you, I'll get you Coke light. Daughter-in-law about Coke light. Mother in law will be there. no, I want coke. Right? In between there, what's the compromise? Son in law must bring sugar free Fanta, both of them will drink it. <laughs> no, 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 really. You've got to come to realize that, you know what, there are certain things that you're not going to change in your daughter in law or your mother in law. There. Accept it, acknowledge it, deal with it. And get over it. Women, get over it. Continue with your lives. Because you know what? 
eventually that infests and festers and you know and all of a sudden the same thing after 15 years you blow up like you can't believe them people say what you are fighting about over how you make biryani but the whole issue is not about the biryani it's about 15 years of a tussle between the two of you in issues of you know how many safari was put into the biryani oh, it's so expensive and it's, wait you know what we got a spice shop get over it uh, we we'll manage right after 15 years, it becomes such a major issue, I'll never cook biryani in this house again. Fine, I won't cook it either. So that we will end up suffering in the center of the floor. <laughs> the third thing is that one of the two, between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law, has to become the more mature one. I've noticed in recent years that it is the younger ones that show more maturity than the older ones. It's a fact. Right? More mature meaning, you know what, right, fine. Carry on, do whatever you want to do, please. Why am I breaking my head? Right? I got other things to worry about. You know, I can carry on. Right? Get over it. A little bit more mature. Right? Fine. Okay. Right. Okay. You're right. Less grief, less irritation, less frustration, right? and less acrimony in the home. One of them has to give. Not giving negatively, but giving positively for your own peace of mind. And you get mothers in law who give you know, you know what, my daughter in the Baba, she's not going to change, uh, she's a you know, lost cop. Baba, Choria, my son is getting hit there left, right, and center. In between, the whole house is like, you know, in, in disarray because it's me, Arada Shada. Some of them do it, you know, I, I'm the victim. Oh, see, 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 I'm the victim. See how the daughter in law is? Right? Or vice versa. Right? The daughter in law, see, 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 my mother is running the whole house, I get nothing to do with it. See, I'm a victim. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. You're not ending the problem. You're just, you know now, compounding the problem. Because you're just looking for somebody else out there to go and complain to. See, I'm the victim now. I play the victim card and the blame card. And these things show lack of emotional, intellectual and spiritual maturity. That's what it shows that. Okay, I'm not going to go into the lengthy discussion really. If I had to start off with mother in law, daughter in law problems, I haven't even started with the children in the marriage yet. I haven't started with the children in the marriage yet. Right? Once the grandchildren come in, the politics that are involved over there, well, once the grandchildren come in, how are you going to deal with this matter? How are you going to deal with that matter? All of these things come into play. As I you missed the best part. Right? I was teaching you how not to be a monster in law. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Really, make friends with your mother-in-law, make her your best friend, one. Two, at one level or the other, gain a level of maturity when one of you is going to say someone has to give. Right? But you know what, right, G, right, okay, right, get over it. Thirdly, don't play the victim card. Fourthly, don't allow it to, to eat you up so much that it destroys your mental equilibrium and the way you live. Do you know the number of women that I listen to sometimes and I have to hear that after 25 years of marriage, sitting and complaining about the mothers-in-law? Sitting and complaining. I've never had a good life. Da, 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 carrying on and on. I say, when are you going to get over it? 25 years of marriage, you couldn't deal with one matter. When are you going to get over it? Are you going to make that the focus of your, of your life's troubles? I ask him a simple question. Is she worth it? She got what she wanted. She made your life, turned your life into a misery. She made your life into a misery. You know the number of women have come to me who have complained to me, you know, my daughter, and the daughter, no problem. So if I, fortunately now I've lived a little longer than normal, right? right? So I tell but you know what, I remember how you or your mother, you know, some of them like fall down with embarrassment. Because they know that they underwent the very same things with their mothers-in-law, they suffered, but they're doing the very same thing to their own daughters-in-law. What, what is this with you woman? Really, it's like a revenge cycle, man. You know what, if someone did it to me, I'm gonna go out and make it my life's mission to do it to somebody else's daughter. Not really, and you expect, well, nobody must do it to my daughter or else, boy. But you're just doing, but you're just doing it to somebody else's daughter. You know, these are harsh realities and we need to come to, to, to some sort of resolution to it. I'm suggesting that Muslim are today, next year, must have one issue with women only and they must talk about monster-in-law problems. Dealing with the mother-in-law and dealing with the daughter-in-law. Have a three-day seminar, you still won't come to a resolution to the problem. <laughs> okay, but going very quickly because I don't want to, 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 to draw this out here. Coming to the sexual challenges of marriage. Let's start off with the first one, which I discussed at the, very, uh, at the beginning. People barely know each other. 
right? And when they had into, got into an arranged marriage or whatever, nowadays with WhatsApp and Instagram and Snapchat and everyone showing selfies of each other, day, you know how the woman looks and people are narcissistic, etc., etc., etc. But things are not like that in the community. It may be like that they would say maybe 40% of people, but 60% of the people end up in relationships when they very know very little about their partner. And it's because it's an arranged marriage, they go through those motions. Now remember, the first night that you are getting married to a person, you're meeting that person for the first time, uh, you know, in terms of intimate contact. Right. Now, men don't realize that, hold on, this woman is for the first time going to be exposing herself to somebody else. Men don't, they, they don't understand that. It doesn't go into their brains, their circuitry doesn't work in that direction. Okay? They feel like how a woman had, let me tell you something, I'm going to be very blunt here. The way a woman dreams from the age of four, how her marriage is going to be, how she's going to walk in, and what dress she's going to be wearing, and what type of food will be there, and what type of decor will be there, and everything there. Like that she's been, you know, dreamy about it from the age of four. Men have been dreamy about their wedding night from the age of four as well. <laughs> well, maybe not four, but 14. Right? That's all they have on their heads. That's all that they have to worry about. Now, what they don't realize is that women have body image issues, number one. Number two, she's just met you or she barely knows you. The last thing she wants to do is to share her body with you. It's difficult. Right? Here, it is like all of a sudden, like, you know, a woman like, what the hell went on here? And then by day three, they expect you to be like, you know what, uh, you know, sexually liberated and well, fine, you know, now we're going to have honeymoon for the rest of our lives. And it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It takes time. And men are never told this. Men are never ever told this. Because parents, fathers, are too afraid to talk to their own sons about marital life and sex and conjugal relations and whatever it is. Right? So if the guy gets inside the world, he's expecting, well, my wife must kiss me now and she must regard me as, you know, as her greatest love and love and all. Blah, blah, oh, blah. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. And if no man is ready to wait, he said, no, darling, okay, fine. You know what? We'll take it step by step. Maybe in a month's time. No, no, I'm, not, I'm very serious. Maybe in a month's time, right, we'll get into, into it. No, no, no. Jazakallah, thank you very much. Tonight, greatest 30 seconds of your life, and Khalas is Men are never taught these things. How do you expect a woman to react to you pulling off her clothes, short of her re regarding it in her head, although she knows contractually she's bound to you, as practical rape? One. Number two, is that in this modern era, women uh, as sexually imaginative, I'm not saying active, I'm saying as sexually imaginative as men are. And very few of them have gone way beyond first base. And the poor guy may be in a situation where he hasn't even gone, he hasn't even stepped onto the plate as yet. Right? And all of a sudden she's already, uh, you know, um, what's the word, comparing him to other relationships. Because they've had heavy petting and this and that and whatever it is. And in her head, she's already had the experience and here's this poor guy there trying to fumble his way into a relationship with her like, oh, God help me. Right? Then, the woman may not be as stunning as you expected her to be. Because you've grown up on a diet of supermodels. And here's your wife with a couple of warts here and there and this and that. And some body image issues, blah, 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 and whatever it is. And you're expecting a supermodel out there. And you don't get it. Guys who have been brought up on a diet of porn nowadays, I'm coming to that just now, right, have unrealistic expectations. And in terms of the fashion industry out there, they create unrealistic expectations of what the perfect female body must be like. And here is the guy expecting that, you know, when, when, when his wife takes off her clothes, there, he's going to see one supermodel. You know, by the way, there's only about five supermodels in the world. The rest of the two, two point, how, how it works, the race? 2.99999 billion of them are all not supermodels. So if you're not one of those people married to one day, don't you are part of the 2.99 billion you know, men out there who don't have supermodels as wives. Right? Now, if the wife is not willing to perform in bed as the expectations are, it becomes a dampener in the marriage. 
and it becomes frustrating for both couples. One, they don't understand men find sexual satisfaction as that which is a, a primer for their marriages and women find emotional satisfaction as a primer for their marriage. Women going to sex emotionally and men going to sex sexually, finished. Now, until and unless men and women don't talk about this one here, that our approaches to these relationships come from different perspectives, you are never going to get things right in the bedroom. Now, the other issue is that you have an issue of frigidity, right? where women don't want to be touched. Women don't want to, don't realize that this contract of marriage requires for the purpose of procreation, conjugal relations. Right? And here is a guy out there who only thinks like that. And now he's having a problem. He said, but this was my avenue to, to, to experience and, and you know, to give vent to my sexual desire. And all of a sudden, right, it's like bread and water. It becomes problematic in relationships. Men are not getting the idea that women have so many emotional issues to go through. She's going through the trauma of her mother and father leaving them. And here it is, she's giving her body to somebody else that she doesn't want to be seen. She doesn't want to... They're not getting all this, but my desires are not being fulfilled. And the fights start. The fights start. One. Two. After a period of time in the relationship, two, three, four, five, six years, it starts becoming boring. It starts becoming... Uh, unimaginative. It's like, okay, right, fine, the same old, same old, same old, right, right. There's nothing exciting in this relationship anymore. The guy is not, is, is not satisfied anymore, or the woman is not satisfied anymore, whatever it is there. And what do they do? They turn to the net, they turn to magazines, they turn to TV, and whatever it is there, and they see this fantastical type of sex taking place on all of these internet sites and whatever it is, and all of a sudden, the guy says, I need to spice up my relationship. So what happens? Either one of two things. If he's not getting enough spice, relationship spiced up in his bedroom there, he's going to go out there and he's going to satisfy himself. Or alternatively, he's going to find his sexual satisfaction through pornography, through movies and magazines and whatever else nonsense. Right? Three is that because of his, he, he, him satisfying himself, he's not going to find the same degree of satisfaction with his wife anymore there, and the relationship goes cold. Third issue is, then people want to live out fantasies that they've seen in the, in the magazines or in the movies or whatever it is, and they want to act it out with their spouses, and their spouses are not ready for that type of adventurous sex. And then the wife wants to know, what the hell is going on with you? Why do you want to sleep from the chandelier? Right? And if she is not fulfilling that requirement, problems. Really, problem. <laughs> then you have the issue of extramarital affairs on both sides. On both sides. Then you have erectile dysfunction. Then you have loss of desire, loss of libido amongst women. Men are not getting it. Women are not getting it. But no one is talking about it. If you have to mention the word erectile dysfunction in a mosque, right? I think half the people will fall down right there. And most of them will actually say, no, and then they'll fall down dead. <laughs> I don't suffer from it. Uh, but ask my, my, my members outside, how many, how many people get niyaz? We call it niyaz. You know? The guy comes there, he kisses the man's hand, he gets in niyaz at the bottom there. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, he comes back with a smile the next day. <laughs> no, no, it's a reality in the community. It's a reality in the community. Do you know the number of times I've had to deal with uncomfortable situations when a woman comes to me complaining to me about her husband? And I said, you know, Kala, I don't want to hear this, right? I, I got the gist of it there, got the point, don't give me details. Don't, no, no, really, don't give me details. Right? And, and then you have these guys out there who now have now become addicted to porn. And they, they want it all the time, and they're looking for all of these things. And the woman says, what the hell are you doing? Then they go out, really, they're going out there and they're finding escorts, right, to fulfill their desires, right? Because of the, the, the kinky ideas and whatever it is. I had a situation, and this is no lie, you asked my uncle from 45th cutting. A woman comes in Parda, she's an elderly woman, she comes to me in Parda and she says, speaks to my uncle from 45th, Imam Sahib, you know what, uh, I've got a problem, I've got HIV. I'm HIV positive. She's in her 60s. The man is saying, what are you talking about? She said, I went to the doctor just now, and the doctor did test because I wasn't feeling well, and I came out HIV positive. And she said, Imam Sahib, Wallahi, I've never been out of my house, you can see I'm in Parda. You know, with the exception of just going to Umrah or whatever it is there. I've never left my home. I've only had one husband. Uh, I've been married for 40 years or whatever it is there. And I'm HIV positive. This is impossible. So the doctor said, if you are not like that, then you must be your husband. But you see, my husband, the big daddy one, I know he like, he goes to this day, whatever. He, he's like, you know, heavy into this and that. 
So eventually, my uncle had to confront the guy because she said, look here, I need to know. The, the guy first thing, she said, oh, blah, 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 how are you saying? So I'm left, right, and center, da, da, da. And he said, well, don't kill the messenger. Go to the doctor and just, just do a test. They, he came out HIV positive. Then the story came out that Hazrat Ji, on the pretext of going for, for Jamaat, was going to Copacabana. You know Copa, Copa, Copacabana in Brazil? Uh, the only place that you find the, the most, the favorite place to go to for Jamaat was Copacabana. Right? He was doing his own Brazilian Olympics. <laughs> and he came back, he came back with HIV positive. Now, sexually transmitted diseases are a major issue in the Muslim community. Don't be deluded by it. Females and males. Young girls today, what do you think, are angels? You think the young girls are angels? You just need to go on the Instagrams and the Snapchats there and you'll find out what the Muslim girls are up to. You know, the, <laughs> there's a joke, one day the mother sits down with the daughter and says, Darling, you know what, I need to talk to you about the birds and the bees. Sure, mom, what do you want to know? <laughs> Sure, mom, what do you want to know? Really, our girls have become sexually active. You'll be shocked. Ask a gynecologist how young girls nowadays are coming back suffering from chlamydia or other uh, HPV viruses or other STDs which women catch. And you ask them, but how is that possible? And parents can't do the math to realize this is the problem. And then men who go out of town quite often, become victims of all of these sexually transmitted diseases there because they've gone out with escorts. And they've caught these illnesses from them. And now the woman has to deal with the problem. And she wants to know now what is going on. Now, how do you deal with that type of infidelity? How do you deal with that type of infidelity? 